Long ago in the Solomon Islands, a boy who wanted to have his way started crying. His parents told him to stop, or creatures will take him away. The creatures were the Solomon Island wild men, the Kakamora. And this is Legends from the Pacific. Aloha, and thank you for joining us. This is Legends from the Pacific, episode 134, Moana's Pirates, the Kakamora. I am Kamuela Kanashiro, a native Hawaiian professional writer, speaker, and Comic-Con panelist with extensive film and television experience. I study mythology, I've encountered unusual things, and I'm a geek. This episode closes our five-episode specials for Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month. You got five episodes this year. How's that? In the beginning, there was the Pacific Ocean. A canoe broke the horizon, piloted by Pele, a beautiful Polynesian maiden who dominated the waves until she felt safe to stop. The audiobook of Our Legends from the Pacific Book One is now available, narrated by multi-award winning voice actress Emily Wu Zeller. Emily has worked on anime, the video game Cyberpunk 2077, and over 500 audiobooks, including Star Wars, The Empire Strikes Back, From a Certain Point of View. Just click the link in our show notes to purchase your copy of our audiobook and enjoy Emily telling our stories today. Later in this episode, your featured song in Hawaiian word, but first, let me share with you Moana's Coconut Pirates. As usual, I apologize for any mispronounced names or words and appreciate your understanding. Kakamora were reported along the coast and deeper in the islands. They are humanoid creatures which can reach six inches to a few feet tall. Some theorize they might be similar to the pygmies of New Guinea or the Floresman species, which we discussed in our episode 132 about many huni. The Kakamora are very violent creatures. They don't wear clothes, their hair reaches their knees, they have very long sharp nails, and are invisible to some people. The whole naked thing could be why Disney depicted them wearing coconuts. For the record, the Disney Kakamoda were not coconuts with arms and legs. They were creatures wearing coconuts for armor. Kakamoda have been called wild men, and though they're known by many names, some creatures are falsely grouped with them. They dwell in holes or small caves. But while some stories claim Kakamoto can close their dwellings to hide their caves, this doesn't really fit since Kakamoto are unskilled in magic, engineering, or mechanical knowledge. In fact, they don't even have weapons, so they rely on their nails, and they don't know how to make fire. They like to play with fire, but they steal it from humans. These traits separate them from Hawaii's Menihuni and their Disney interpretation, which had them as a type of Mad Max Waterworld pirates. Kakamoda have an unknown language. They dance and sing under a full moon or during rain. They eat nuts, fruit, small woodland creatures, and sometimes humans. As mentioned earlier, they don't know how to use fire, so they eat their food raw. While mischievous to human adults, they'll also eat adults by luring them into the woods. They do this by beating one of their own, causing it to cry like a baby and attack anyone who shows up looking to help. Kakamoda have blatantly stole and eaten children, and are drawn to crying. They shouldn't be taken lightly since one story claimed a youngster joined them during a dark storm. While he initially blended with them, they communicated an intruder was among them, and the child met a fatal end. Adults, you may protect yourself by pretending to sleep, or remain sleeping. Stories claimed Kakamoda will leave a resting human alone, and usually take the time observing the human's hands and feet. The child stopped crying. However, that night, he suspected his parents lied to him. He cried loud enough for his parents in the next room to hear, but it didn't disrupt the chirping insects. While sobbing under his blanket, a presence entered. A draft rustled a dried leaf beneath the child's bamboo platform. 
but his parents would have done or said something by now. It loomed over him. The insects were silent. Dread filled his stomach, and the looming presence caused tears to seep from his clenched eyes. His platform jostled. Fear stole his scream. Wind blew upon him. The leaf beneath his platform crunched. He chanced to peek. Seeing a higher part of the wall confirmed his platform was lifted, then carried outside. Foliage being stomped erupted beneath him. Branches brushed against his blanket. He grabbed a thicker one and slipped from his bed as it was carried into the night. The rising sun woke his parents. Their child's missing bed caused them to scream and run into the forest. Their son was nearby. He released his branch upon their urging and apologized to his parents. As always, a big mahalo nui loa to our Patreon members. Christopher, Meg, Jessica Bullock, Edward Pua Ohenki, Felisa H., The Makuli Guy, and of course, Ren Shepard. Your support keeps our show going. If you'd like to support our show, please click the link in our show notes and become a Legends from the Pacific Patreon member to enjoy an exclusive monthly Hawaiian story like the rare story of who the Hawaiian volcano god was before Pele and other nifty benefits. Your rewards are waiting for you, so become a Legends from the Pacific Patreon member today. There are several stories of Kakamoto being captured. One Kakamoto was dressed with jewelry while a female was married to a human. However, Kakamoto get bored revert to their old ways, and try escaping. Records suggest Kakamoto sightings reduced after islanders acquired firearms. This was reflected in stories which ended with islanders shooting Kakamoto. This could have driven Kakamoto to extinction, but if Kakamoto are still around, they may be in the remote parts of the Solomon Islands or those places considered uninhabited. I felt the Disney interpretations were an interesting concept but while it was amusing they could quickly illustrate their faces with chalk, I felt they were mainly disjointed. I even forgot they were in the film. Overall, they seemed a bit much. You know, aside from their mechanical warship, or city, thingy. As far as their traditional stories, it was interesting how similar the captured Kakamoto stories felt. By and large, it involved a Kakamoto being captured, islanders trying to domesticate them, the Kakamoto reverting to its old ways, they become hostile, and is killed. As stated earlier, this was seen across several stories, so perhaps the Kakamoto, or something like them, were real. They just weren't wearing coconut armor. If you like what you heard, please give us a rating and write a review. Our future listeners and I would greatly appreciate it. Our theme song is Mystery by Tavana, courtesy of High Sessions, sound effects by Sound Effects Factory. Our music coordinator is Matt Duffy, a.k.a. DJ Triple Bypass. Links and show notes can be found on our website, legendsfromthepacific.com, including a link to your featured song, which is Keakua Mana A by Mark Yamanaka, courtesy of High Sessions. Legends from the Pacific was written, produced, and edited by me, Kamuela Kaneshiro. I also wrote our original stories. Your featured Hawaiian word is niu. Niu means coconut. An example of niu is Monty Python and the Holy Grail got a lot of mileage using niu instead of horses. Once again, niu is Hawaiian for coconuts. As a side note, the pythons couldn't get horses, which led them to one of cinema and comedy's greatest adjustments. But focusing on Oahu, Neo means Neo Valley is actually Coconut Valley. Ah, the things you learn from our show. Thank you once again for listening. Mahalo and a hui ho! Yeah.